Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. Seven till the hour. Thank you very much for staying with me. I'm Jim Blasingay. You listen to the Small Business Advocate Show. And I'm glad you're here. We got our good buddy David Dossie back on the show. David is a partner with Gallagher and Dossie. They're intellectual property attorneys, patent attorneys. We used to call them. David, tell us, give us your website, please. Protection.com. Invention-protection.com. Check it out, folks. It's not your grandfather's intellectual property attorney website. It's uh, it's, uh, I think you'll enjoy going there and seeing what they got going on. You know, David, you talked about a minute ago about the fact that patents, once you get a patent, you can hang on to it as long as the patent lasts and not do anything with it. You can squat on it if you want to. But here's something that, that, that you talked about cringing also earlier. One of the things I'm sure that you cringe about when you, when you talk to somebody new is, is, is waiting for them to tell you how long they've actually been, they've had their product in the marketplace. I mean, You've got to, you're foreclosed after 12 months of commercializing your prop, your your idea, your product. You're foreclosed from from patenting it after that, aren't you? Right, and that's only in the U.S. Outside of the U.S., most countries do not give you a 12 month window after you publicly disclose it or really? offer it for sale. So you mean most immediately? You don't. Good. You mean immediately? Right. If you. Uh, in most countries, you you need to have filed an application before you publicly disclose it or offer it for mm. sale or your proposal. So at least at least the U.S. gives you a year to, to to do it. So so folks, if you've been you know if, if you've been doing something for a long time and you say, wait a minute, this is I, this is valuable. I better I better try to protect it. Well, if it's been twelve months, forget about it. Right. So what are some other things we need to pay attention to? Well, I'd say when you're when you're at the outset of developing a new product, people often come to us and say, I want to know if it's patentable or not. And, and we say, whoa, well, take a step back. If you're just on the outset, outset of developing a product, you really need to understand what we call the state of the technology or a patent landscape first. So hmm. you, you get a feel for how many patents are in, surrounding this general product line that you need to worry about. Now, a secondary step to that might be the patentability opinion, because that is specific to, okay, now my product, in light of all these patents that we now know exist, is it likely that I will, I will be able to obtain patent protection? So you can, kind of get a, you can kind of get an early warning on that. Well, and I think that the knowing the patent landscape or the state of the technology oftentimes helps guide you during the product development process that if it's a wheelbarrow and, and you were thinking about this type of angled handle to improve right. leverage, and right off the bat, you see that someone's got 10 patents surrounding that particular handle shape or design, you know to develop or to steer your your product development away from that and try to come up with something different. So it can, mm. oftentimes, these costs have the potential of saving you so much money, um, and, and it's it's hard to watch people learn that after the fact. Well, exactly, and the, 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 the stages of developing a, an idea, of developing a product, of developing anything that's protectable that you would want to protect, the stages of all that, every stage comes with a cost. And, folks, if you can, if you can dip your toe in the water and spend a couple of nickels to find out if you should go ahead and stip, stick the other toes in the water for two more nickels, and then, then, you know, you can do that, can't you, David? I mean, you can go from toe to foot to ankle, you know, all the way up to your backside and, and, and keep spending money as, as, as you continue to test the water. You can do that, can't you? Well, you need to always think about laying out a plan that you cut your losses as soon as you can. And mm-hmm. the last thing you want to do is already spent $100,000 developing that cool new wheelbarrow design and then find out for $2,000 you would have known about this portfolio concerning the shape of the handle that you couldn't go that route right off the bat. You know? Well, and, and nothing, if, if nothing else, you might, if somebody else has already patented it and they're not using it, you might be able to go buy it. It might be a better idea than yours. You could go buy the patent and, and, and short-circuit the thing. What do you think? 
exactly. You know, licensing is always an option. And another thing to mention is a lot of people may know about a particular patent in an industry, and, and they'll have um, guided their product development in light of that patent, and they'll come in and I'll say, well, is that patent even in force? You know, you have to keep in mind that patents have maintenance fees that have to be paid. Right, and right. And three maintenance fees, so, oftentimes, so, they're not paid, and it goes into the public domain. After three times? Well, if you don't pay the very first maintenance fee, a patent that's only four years old could be ah, in the public domain. Could, could, you go, could you go buy it? Could you go pay that and pick it up? No, you can use it for free. Just, ah, <laughs> okay. Hey, David, that's good information. Thanks for being here. Good job today. Great. Thank you, Jim. We'll see you next time. David Dossie, ladies and gentlemen. That's invention-protection.com. It's his website. i got to go for this hour. I'm Jim Blastingame. Don't go away. I'll be back after the news. More to come. Stay with us. Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience, except as otherwise provided by copyright law. All other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved. Prohibited. All rights reserved. Prohibited.